in Paris. This Ooh, is la, la. first time over. No, actually, I've been to Paris uh, twice before. I was here once for the European Poker Awards, and I was once here on holiday, but I've never been here playing poker. So, first time playing poker in Paris. Now, anyone who was watching you on day one probably thought you would have made it through. So, what happened? Did you have a night there? Yeah, I had a really good day. Um, you know, I liked my table. There were some tough players, but it was, you know, not so bad. And I had a fair, decent amount of chips, and then I had a set over set kind of thing, which, you know, when you're that deep stacked, um, that's kind of the thing that's really going to hurt you, I think. Uh, I managed not to lose all my chips, obviously, because, you know, I was left with like 5,800. Blinds were at, I think, uh, 75, 150, oh, sorry, 153 at the time, so it wasn't great. And then I built back up, and then I lost again, and then I had, you know, it was just one of those days where uh, every time I had, you know, a great hand, someone had one that was slightly better, and that happens in poker, and now I have time in Paris. Um, so when was the last time you played something of this magnitude? Then? Gosh, um, the last time I played a big live event, because I played at the World Series, but only really small events, and I didn't play that many, to be honest, because I was really busy over the summer. So the last time I played a big event, probably um, WPT in Beau Rivage. Okay. And that was a while ago. Yeah. yeah. So getting my feet wet again. <laughs> um, now, last time we spoke to you, you were, you were just coming on board with WPT, having just started on high stakes poker so are you ever off the TV <laughs> you know people must be getting sick of me because seriously <laughs> I'm like everywhere um, I've been really lucky I've had some of the best jobs <clears throat> in poker and working with the WPT was awesome and it was a really great experience and uh, you know I don't know how those guys do it I seriously don't you know Mike and Vince and Tony and Kimberly they must be on the road like a hundred percent of the time because there's always a WPT and they're always at them so you know huge props to them I definitely I couldn't do it but they do a great job is it just season nine you're involved with them are you back on for season 10 at all just season nine they've yeah. got a really amazing team and a really tight sort of format going forward that includes the European shows this year as well so this season it's all going to be one very streamlined production instead of having you know a, a European crew working on the European events so yeah, yeah. I, I think it's going to look pretty amazing yeah fingers crossed maybe we'll get a Canadian stop someday oh I hope so I hope so I'd love that <laughs> WPT Canada would be amazing now you, you're living over there uh, at the moment aren't you where are you based at the moment you know, I'm not actually based anywhere right now. <laughs> All sort my stuff hobo, is, right? yeah, I'm kind of like a hobo. That's, you know, it's a Canadian TV show that I grew up with. It's yeah, called The Littlest did, Hobo. Did well. You yeah, did? Hobo. Awesome. Cool. Yes, and it's like, that is the theme song for my life right now. I'm living out of a suitcase, and I have been since basically June. Yeah. Um, so all my stuff's in storage. I'm, you know, spending time with family in Canada. I went and stayed with my family for a couple of weeks before coming here. Mm. Now I'm going to England to spend time with friends there for a couple of weeks. Then WPT Malta, and then back to England. And then I don't, I don't know. I mean, I have to go back to Vegas in November um, for the World Series. And otherwise, I'm, I'm just kind of bobbling around, seeing what takes my fancy. So maybe you're playing a little bit more than presenting these days. No, actually I'm not, because <laughs> most of the time I am spending over in the States, so I'm obviously yeah. not, you know, playing online, which is, it's not fun, but, you know, hopefully it won't be forever. Um, when I'm in Canada, it was really nice, I was able to sit down and play someone on party, and it just felt like, ah, oh, it's been so long. Uh, so I'll do that in England as well, I'll get a chance to be online, but, you know, I'm not playing as much as I used to because of all of that, and because I'm traveling so much, um, a lot of it's for fun. A lot of it's to go see friends and to, you know, whatever. So I'll get a few big events in, like this one and like Malta. Yeah. Um, but generally, I'm just traveling for work. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there. So uh, I've been, yeah, doing a lot of, you know, Party Poker's television uh, content. I host that for them as their ambassador, which is awesome. And then the World Series stuff, which is coming back up as well. So it's full, really full. <laughs> Any, any dreams to move into sort of non-poker TV presenting or is, can you see yourself, you know, as Kara Scott, 20-year-old veteran of, yeah. uh, of TV poker or uh, sports maybe or something else? You know, I can see myself moving back into sports because that's where I started yeah. and um, I can certainly see that happening and I've kind of always worked in different areas. This is the first time that I've had, you know, a really concrete sort of I guess four years, five years in poker where that's basically all I've done. Um, before that I was working in sports, I did a little bit of baseball, I did uh, martial arts which was my general um, specific knowledge area. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I used to also work in film, I was you know, a film producer, 
and I worked in TV in production, and these are all things that were pretty interesting. So I can see that happening alongside the poker. But once poker gets in your blood, it's really hard to give it up. It's, it's an ever-changing, constantly new industry. The faces are always, you know, there's all these new people coming in all the time. The game changes so much. What's happening in TV with poker right now is uh, this huge boom where it's just kind of leaping forward in terms of its television content. And being a part of it right now is a lot of fun because you kind of never know how far we can push the boundaries with, you know, getting the live streams. And, yeah, so right now I'm pretty happy with poker. So I'm a producer in TV, and you've got an amazing idea for a poker show. Go on, pitch me in 10 seconds. Go on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, let's see. Party Poker hosts a, um, <laughs> a show where I play heads up against people in the most glamorous parts of the world so I can travel. And, uh, yeah, you know, that, that, for me, that would be great. That's brilliant. Yeah, excellent. Where's this budget coming from? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it'll sell. It'll sell. Yeah. 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 Um, so are you, when you're back in Canada, are you hearing like the uh, the uh, the doors being battered down by American online pros trying to get in? It's uh, Canada suddenly seems to be like the center of the world. I mean, all of a sudden. I know it's really funny um, considering that. You know, it's not that easy to just move to a different country. I know, I've done it. It's not that easy. You have to be really careful about making sure you do it properly. And, you know, there's a lot of immigration and legal issues that I think some of the poker players are running into because they're like, oh, what, I have to get a visa? Well, yeah, you kind of do. It's a whole other country, guys. I mean, I know it's we're just like your neighbors to the north, but seriously. But, man, there's so many of them. So many of them. It's like, have you seen Day After Tomorrow? Yeah. It's like, you know where they're all trying to get into Mexico? It's like that, it's like this emigration from the US, like mm -hmm. mass emigration. Like these pros are going to Malta, you know, England, yeah. and they're like, right, so I have to get a passport first of all. It's quite amusing. Yes. I mean, I mean, you guys take the mick out of Americans as much as we do. I mean, it's, it's quite funny. I mean, even we yeah. feel sorry for them. But um, I mean, what, how do you see it? Well, I think Canada is a very attractive place for online pros, obviously, for, you know, not just the online poker, but it's a beautiful country and it's got some great cities and a lot of people I know are moving to Vancouver and they're moving to Montreal um, which is an incredibly sort of European feeling city it's very cosmopolitan Vancouver's got you know the mountains and the ocean and this like great laid-back vibe people are going there to kind of test the waters to see if they could live there and falling in love with it and I mean I can see why if I moved back to Canada I would I would have to move to Vancouver because it's probably one of the best cities in the world. So I can see more people kind of moving over there, but it's hard to say how long, you know, everything's so up in the air with the legislation. Once it gets sorted out, maybe all those American players will have fallen in love with Vancouver and won't want to move back to the States. I mean, it's possible. Um, but I think everyone's in kind of this weird state of flux right now where we're just kind of waiting to see what happens. And it's really hard to kind of you know, put down roots in a place because you're thinking, am I going to move? Is it going to be permanent? Is it going to be a year? Like, what am I going to do? And it's a, it's a really weird time right now in poker. Yeah, isn't Vancouver always voted number one city in the world to live, or two behind Melbourne or something like that? Isn't it? Yeah, I think for like 10 years in a row or something, Vancouver yeah. was the, the highest standard of living of any city in the world. It, it's pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> it is a pretty cool place. Okay. Um, now, you also did a stint on high stakes poker, which you obviously enjoyed a, a lot. Um, any big moments? I asked you last time, and you were a little bit coy about some of your favourite <laughs> moments. But uh, any of the pros that you particularly like, or absolutely can't stand the sight of? <laughs> there are no pros that I can't stand the sight of. That's I will not never the proper say answer. Ever, I am like neutral. I am Switzerland. <laughs> I'm Canada. <laughs> I'm neutral. Um, but yeah, there are some that I love to to interview and and watch play. And this past season in particular I thought it was really fun to watch some of the amateurs or the business people playing and how that changed the game because you know all these pros come in and they really do want to beat the amateurs and it's like that's supposed to be their zone their comfort zone where they're really going to take control high high stakes you know huge amounts of money on the table and uh, you know I think it can be really hard initially to adjust to the mindset of someone who's not a pro and you maybe overestimate where people are thinking and what level they're thinking at. And uh, I loved watching that. I mean, it was heartbreaking to see some of the pros like just lose massive pots against some of the amateurs because of it. But it was, it was really interesting to watch. Yeah, I loved that. That psychological game. <laughs> 
Any uh, any big what like your top five moments from late night poker? Everyone's got a few that they love. Oh man, gosh! Any Helmuth blow ups that you were witness to? <laughs> you know what? Helmuth has been so good at um, kind of bringing it bringing it back. He's had some massive blow ups, but I think probably his biggest one was on a WPT when he bubbled the final table. I believe that was last season where yeah, he like ended up, up, yeah, curled up in the fetal position on the floor. Um, <laughs> That was shocking. So I've never kind of witnessed anything of that magnitude. Uh, I remember having a conversation. I was interviewing Phil Ivey two seasons ago on High Stakes Poker, and he had played this really big hand against Patrick Antonius, and it hadn't gone to showdown. And Phil was really curious, obviously. Well, he knew basically what Patrick had, but he was looking to have it confirmed. So he came in to do his interview with us, and I have you know, the director in my earpiece. And uh, we're chatting away, and, and he says something to me like, and so obviously, you know, when Patrick has aces there, la, 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 and I nodded. Um, and he took this as confirmation that I told him what was in the hand and he, the look of like delight on his face, he started like kind of pointing at me and being like, ha, ah, I got you, I knew it, you told me. And I was like, I didn't tell you anything, I'm not giving you any information, I swear to God. Was it the presenter giving away tells? That's no good. I know, right? I was like, I don't know anything, I don't see the whole cards, but he, he would not believe me at all. And uh, just the look of delight on his face, it was like he was a kid who, you know, managed to get the teacher to say something naughty and uh, <laughs> I think that's probably one of my top moments <laughs> I don't think it ever made it on air thank god but uh, yeah it was definitely one of I mean these guys are professional information gatherers and you have got to watch what you say around them because seriously they pick up everything it seems a world away from uh small sort of TV shows in England that you started doing, you know, sort of like in the backwaters of cable TV. What's the difference, like, you're going to America to film this stuff, like, were you in the back of your mind thinking about where you came from with thought, Poker Night Live? I mean, this will be read by Canadian uh, readers who might not know. Just explain a bit about the first shows you did in the UK. When I first started in poker, I had not actually played poker since I was a kid, you know, around the family table, and I was offered a job on a little tiny cable show called Poker Night Live, and I believe that that was also a show that was franchised into Canada mm. at sort of the end of its run, um, not with uh, the British presenters, but with yeah, a whole Canadian well, crew. But that was where I started in poker, and it was two people, you know, a presenter and a pro, sitting behind a stationary desk with like three cameras, no people, just cameras kind of trained on us, and we would talk for, I think it was four hours straight with a five minute break at each hour. But just absolutely, that was it. No commercials, no nothing. And we were looking at online tournaments and commentating through every hand. And that's how I learned poker. I would sit with the pro and, you know, they brought me in to be the voice of the novice. To say, wait a minute, what do you mean by under the gun? You know, at, at first I had no idea what anything was. And then it was like, well, you know, why shouldn't they raise there? Why should they just call? Or what do you mean by this? So I kind of learned along with a lot of our viewers who were quite new to poker as well. And, uh, you know, I love where I started. <clears throat> It's actually where I met, um, you know, my best friend is a guy called Nick Welfall. He taught me how to play. He was the pro that I worked with the most. And he said to me once, you know what, Kara, no matter where we end up in television and what kind of big shows we ever do, probably nothing will ever be this fun. And he, you know, in a lot of ways he was right, because we could say whatever we wanted. It was the middle of the night on cable television. Like, sometimes I'm not sure how many people were watching, maybe like 10. I'm sure it was more, but... Sometimes it felt like there was nobody watching. And Nick does uh, sarcasm and humor very well, doesn't he? Man, Nick is the driest wit I know. And I was like, I think I was the perfect straight man for him. So I would kind of set him up and he would just knock him down. And uh, we have kind of perfected our double act and our comedy on the show. And everyone was very kind to us and, uh, and allowed us to do that. And so, yeah, it, I, I still really think of those days super fondly. And still people come up to me and they're like, I used to watch you on Poker Night Live. That's how I learned how to play poker. And that's that's really cool. Like some really good players have said that to me. And I'm like, really? That's crazy. That's awesome. But it, it just seems like a world away. It's, it's amazing how fast all the poker world changes. That that's only a few years ago. But the way that things, even TV shows have developed. I mean, it's just like 30 years ago in 
drama or you know what I mean in compared to other areas of TV it's just utterly insane yeah. so where I mean if it's going to be that fast moving where's it going to be in five years time we can have reality TV shows or huh. I wouldn't doubt it I think reality TV for poker players would be interesting I mean we've had something kind of like that in the states they've you know followed poker players trying to make it big yeah um, yeah I can see that happening I think some friends of mine um, are making a documentary on online poker called boom Right. And that okay. I think is going to. I haven't seen. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of it. I've just seen what they've kind of put out so far, and I think that's really going to change the way people look at poker because yeah. you know one of the people that they're focusing on is this woman who's a friend of mine and a really lovely woman and a wife and a mother named Danielle, and she plays online. Well, she did play online high stakes cash, which is not a very typical thing for a woman to do, especially. And she played as D Moon Girl and kind of looking at how, you know what her life life was like as a mother and a wife and a very normal person but also playing you know high stakes online poker and then when that all kind of went away I think people are interested in that watching the reality of it and the emotion of it and how it affects people not just in terms of massive wads of cash being like flung around through the air because there's only so much of that you can see and be interested in if that's not your lifestyle then you start thinking oh actually uh, but to see how people are being affected by it, yeah, I think that's the next step. Yeah, that's the Ryan Furpo uh, documentary, isn't it? That's being made. Um, about, uh, is it Ryan? He's the Jay producer. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah. I think Taylor Cavey's involved as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so yeah. you know they've done some really good stuff already. Um, and but things are moving so fast that uh, by the time it comes out, like the world will have changed completely. You know, yeah. Legislation, mm. maybe, maybe not, might be in place, but. Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it, what's going on? Also. It really is, and they're d it's even though, it, yeah, I think so much will have changed by the time it comes out, they were able to, just by kind of luck, be in the right place at the wrong time when yeah. everything changed in America. So they're kind of documenting that moment in time as well, yeah. and you can see the devastation that it's causing people's lives to, you know, have their livelihood taken away. And... Uh, it, it's interesting. It's a really interesting documentary. No matter what you feel about the the rights and the wrongs of it, I think just watching the human the effect on, on the humans involved is interesting. Yeah. Um, do you, do you still know a lot of U.S. online players who were affected really badly and who lost a lot of money or still have money frozen? Um, a lot of people that I know, it wasn't so bad for. Cause, uh, you know, a lot of the people that I know are European players or Canadian players, mm. and were able to. Yeah, be all right with it. And thankfully, I was only playing on party poker when I was in Canada and Europe, so I, I was okay. Uh, I do feel for the people who, who got caught out, though. A lot of people were affected. Yeah. So you come off the back of uh, an award at the uh, British Poker Awards uh, as Best Poker Personality. So you obviously still have uh, some sway with the public who voted for you. So it's amazing, really. I mean, you're not really on British TV that much. So... Uh, do you feel glad that you're still being recognised sort of a few years on? Do you yeah. think that um, in poker particularly sort of celebrity sort of <laughs> hangs around a little bit more than usual? It's awesome, especially considering I haven't lived in England for like two years almost now mm. to, to have won an award at the British Poker Awards, especially for that. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. I, I know that uh, the big game, the party poker big game, uh, has been airing on British TV, which is great, and uh, the Premier League was airing there, so I've never really had kind of a break off of the screen in England, but I've not been there. I've not been going to the events, and I've not been kind of personally there. So yeah, it's amazing, and I'm, I'm kind of blown away, and I know people make a lot of jokes about uh, you know, is she Canadian? Is she British? Now she lives in America. Oh, she's just whatever suits her. But, you know, I'm very proudly Canadian. I was born and raised there. But then I spent like 11 years in England, pretty formative years, and I learned how to play poker there. And I started, you know, my poker career there. And that's where a lot of my friends are. And so it's kind of where my heart is as well. Like when people ask me my hometown, I say Brighton because. <laughs> Brighton, I feel like a Brighton girl. That's you know, that's where I love, and and so yeah, it. I would love to move back there someday, and I'm hoping that happens, and it might. You never know. It depends on how things go with work. It's like kind of bouncing all over the place. So, but yeah, I, I love England, and I'd love to move back. I feel very British. I don't sound it, but I feel it. 
probably Canadians will think you sound like the Queen or something like that. Like my mum goes do, back. My yeah. mum's Canadian. She goes back and they all go, oh God, you sound like the Queen. And she doesn't. She sounds like... A you. Canadian. Yeah, yeah, a Canadian. Yeah, yeah. There's no British twang there at all. No, but they so, hear it. Yeah. Yeah, I get that all the time when I'm in Canada. That I sound very British, and I'm like, really? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, so what's, let's just sum up the next six, 12 months really quickly. What, with, what you got going on with party? Any big events? Back to the World Series, maybe? Yeah, um, I believe that we've got a uh, TV series that we're filming with Party Poker in... October so I'm gonna be coming back over here and doing that and I'm really excited about that because it's a very new concept for party and it's something that you know we haven't done in this way before so uh, yeah that's exciting what is it um, I'm not sure if they've announced it so I, I don't really want to say good go on let them in it yeah, no, I'm not. I'm, not. <laughs> I'm very discreet. I'm sure they've announced it, but I haven't heard it. But I don't want to say. Okay. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And, and like I say, it's something different and new, and I love doing that. Um, and then, you know, all the other party poker shows that we do, like uh, the European Open and the World Women's Open, and, you know, these shows hopefully as well in the next six to 12 months, we'll be doing those again for the next series. In November, obviously, it's November 9, so uh, I'll be back hosting that uh, with the World Series for ESPN. And that's a lot of fun and a lot of pressure and exciting. Uh, and then, yeah, playing. I mean, I've still, I'm still going to be playing a little bit more. I don't, I don't play as often as all that. I, I think I probably play like, I don't know, nine or ten events a year, which is a lot in terms of live events. But it's, you know, if you're playing that online, you could do that in a day, less than a day. <laughs> so uh, it's not a huge amount of poker, but it's a lot of fun and I get to travel and do that. So I'm, I'm kind of picking out which ones I want to do. I'd love to go to Ireland for the WPT. Yep. I was talking to someone about that last night. That would be awesome. Mm. Uh, Prague as well. Like there's some amazing European stops this year yeah. and those would be my preference. I'd love to come back over and do the European WPTs. Okay, cool. Um, tip for the November 9th? Gosh. You always kind of have to go with the chip leader. That's <laughs> the easiest answer. <laughs> it's the easiest answer. But uh, I don't know. It, it depends on what everyone's doing right now to prepare, and it depends on the day who's, you know, focused and where the cards go. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's I, probably I, the most diplomatic answer I've ever heard. That's very good. I'm Switzerland. <laughs> I'm Canada. I'm totally neutral. <laughs> and um, other uh, poker presenters, anyone you kind of looked up to over the last couple of years or modeled yourself on who's the best gosh you know who I really like and uh, she's not done much in the way of like television stuff but she's done a lot of online content I like Gloria Balding I think she is smart and funny and you know knows poker as well but she just comes across in this very smart funny approachable way that I think really sets her apart and she's got really good skills I mean I've watched a lot of her stuff and I like her on a personal level but I just I just think she's really good at what she does